campers would work good too, that you guys could come in, get checked in and enjoy everything and get up and enjoy the program quicker. Um, with that being said, I'll kind of move along because we've got dinner in not too long. Uh, I'd like to introduce our former training director of the council, Dave Finger. Dave. Wow, bigger crowd than I expected. This is awesome. Um, I've been coming to camp here for a long time, and uh, I think that there's a, a group of people who manage the business end of things, and they don't come to camp. And then there's a group of people who come to camp. And the people who come to camp, I think, attach to the first thing they see. And I know that coming here, and this is my absolute favorite camp in the world, and that is not, I am not blowing smoke on that just because I'm here. Um, uh, scouts that have come up here to start their adventure, or the adults who have come up here to start a training adventure or to be part of a course, there's been a hole. You know, we've had some some uh, portable shelters down here that have blown away in the wind. We've had some uh, a variety of different ways to try to get people together, but it just hasn't been right, and it's right again. And I think what we're seeing, what we had this year, starting this year, after the, all the work that went in on, on Red Deer, especially to get this ready, and a tremendous amount of work that's gone on past that. Thank you very much. Um, we're back. We're back to a place where people come in and they anchor to a point. So for years and years to come, this is going to be an anchor for an awful lot of people who come to this camp. And they'll remember this. They'll remember where they go after this, the, the adventures and the places that they'll be. But they'll anchor here. And as they later on bring their kids back here, they'll re-anchor. So I'm really super pleased that this is back in operation. It's a wonderful facility. It got rotated 90 degrees from the original plans. And whoever did that is a genius. Because this is much smarter than having it angled that way. Um, so I'm glad you're all here to, to help celebrate in this. This has been an absolutely wonderful thing. For me, one of the big anchors to me is the um, is the tie to Bob Carabas. And Craig Kepler is going to talk a little bit about Bob. Bob invited me to staff on the very first wood batch course that I ever staffed. And um, that was huge. And so there's a double anchor for me right here. Bob and the place you come to check in, the place you come to to start your adventure in camp. Um, so I'm really, really pleased that we're doing this. I'd like to uh, ask uh, my best friend, Craig Kaplan, to step on up and uh, talk about Bob. It's there. I can't commit it to memory like Dave can. Um, so anyway, I am honored and moved to be able to talk a little bit about Robert Carapas. Uh, Bob was a scouter's scouter. Um, his activities in scouting are really too many to enumerate. Uh, but let it be said that he did most of the jobs that anybody can possibly do in scouting. Ranging from Cub Scout leader to Wood Badge Course Director to Council Commissioner. And he brought dignity and wisdom to every one of those jobs. I suspect that if asked, Bob would have said that his favorite job in scouting was simply anything that kept him in contact with the youth no matter what his other job might have been. Long after the point in his career where many people stopped attending unit activities, Bob remained active in his troop, attending meetings of summer camp. Um, I was told one time that his nickname in his troop was Yoda, um, which is an indicator of the esteem in which he was held by those youth. As I look around this shelter, I realize it's the perfect tribute to him. It is open and it's welcoming. <clears throat> Bob was both. He was an advocate for all types of scouts. He actually didn't like to wear his scout awards. He had a uniform that was stripped of all those awards because he felt that if they were a barrier between him and people he might meet. They might think he was too lofty or too experienced. And so he tried to downplay his many, many accomplishments. Um, At gatherings, he was always the first person um, to approach a new face, especially if someone looked like they weren't sure they belonged there. <laughs> Those he approached quickly learned from Bob that they were welcomed and valued. Bob was the welcoming shelter that people hope to find when they are new to a group. I know that Bob is here smiling with us as we gather in this place now to be dedicated in his name. Just as I know that he will be here in future years to welcome and shelter 
all those who come new to Camp Cutler and come again to Camp Cutler. His presence will be here to help provide a measure of comfort to all new arrivals. He is and will remain a deep and integral part of the spirit of this place. Steve Hoyt. I am Steve Hoyt. I serve as executive director of the council. And actually, my first year here serving as scout executive, Bob was the vice president of membership. Um, and at the time, you remember, membership is declining and not going well, and it's probably a job that nobody wanted. And Bob generously jumped into that and helped get us on the right track. So it was a pleasure to work with him. You know, it's my pleasure to really thank a couple people who helped make this reality. And the three key donors who helped make this possible who do not want to be recognized, but they're all here. So let me say thank you to all of you for helping make this come together, because we wouldn't have done that without the donors that make this significant. As well as a number of volunteers who actually put a lot of sweat into helping put this together. So let me recognize them. Um, Peter Heydrich, uh, Richard uh, Keogh, uh, Tom Torkey, John Bourne, uh, and then our sign, Brendan DeClerc. Where's Brendan? I saw him sneak through somewhere. But, uh, Brendan yeah. signed, so thank you, Brendan, for that. Um, also, a special thank you to Chuck Fox, his entire work team, who kind of helped pull this together as well. You know, it was really a team effort, and this wouldn't have come together if it wasn't for everybody. So with that, thank you. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite Sheila to come up so we can unveil the sign. And if all of you could kind of walk to the right or to your left and around to the front, and the sign faces the parking lot. And Sheila, if you could come up. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we have to untie the rope. which I'm sure at some point you will go. Um, he also came to Camp Cutler. A lot of times he did this with his son as well. Um, there's also uh, Beechwood on here, which is the Girl Scout camp. Um, and so he did a lot with my daughter, who lives in New York, who unfortunately could not be here due to time restraints. But um, uh, so he did both with uh, his uh, son and daughter. Um, and there's weevilos, there's all sorts of, and I, if you guys would like to uh, put it over someplace, you want to take a close look, you can. Um, obviously, there is a very noisy bell, and there's a whistle, 
and there's just numerous um, medallions of different uh, of different times. Um, also, there are uh, wood badge um, that's for adult leader training, and uh, it's just uh, so much to see. So, but and then I will just give a minute here and thank everybody. So I'm just going to stick this. Maybe, and if you guys want to look at it, you're more than welcome to. Um, but uh, this is just such a great honor. You can be emotional. But. necessarily like all the attention but on the other hand he would be uh, a very good leader he did like to greet people he wanted to make sure that uh, that he could become a friend of theirs and scouting and just in life um, he had many little mottos um, he uh, one of them was life is beautiful and that was you know one of his last and I would say that he had a beautiful life and a beautiful wife. <laughs> um, and um, his uh, son and daughter, Joe, and Joe was an Eagle Scout. Mary Ellen went up to uh, certain levels of Girl Scout ranks. Um, I'm sure Scouters know different ones, but um, you know, she got to the Silver Award. And uh, but uh, she was such a big camper as well as Joe and then Bob. Um, uh, and and so they they really loved it. He he loved the oath and the promise. Um, is Craig and Dave and and many Val and just a numerous amount of friends, close friends, absolutely. Um, he did like to hear it, and he, I think he pretty well lived by it. Um, he was a person that um, he wanted the best for everybody, and he certainly wanted the best for his son and his daughter, um, and me, and anybody that, you know, he was kind of a collector, you know, he was a collector of people. And uh, he enjoyed talking with them. Um, he did like to, um, oh, sometimes give advice, but it wasn't always, um, it was mostly good advice. Uh, sometimes, you know, you just don't always want to hear it at the time. But then later, guess what? You remember. Wow. Something he said. So I do uh, thank you, and I think this is such a great honor and a great place, and I don't know if it could get any better. So I will say, life is beautiful and journey on. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, we are adjourned. Uh, flags are up.